hello hi everyone let's continue in the last class we we have already seen uh, countability so today we will see some some of the examples where we will show that some set are uncountable basically uh, and so this Cantor's diagonalization theorem we will use and <coughs> almost five or six examples we will see where set are uncountable and then we will take some examples for practicing some gate questions you can say all the previous gate questions we will take okay okay so now let's start so in the last class we have already seen what is countable so countable means either a set is finite or a set is countably infinite now <laughs> finite is easy okay anyone can handle finite if if you are given a finite set then of course you can just uh, say that that is a finite set and finite set is countable that is the definition of countable that we have used in the last lecture we have already seen this i will put the link of the last lecture in the in the description i will put it okay now we have seen the definition of countably infinite so what is countably infinite that you already know if you have a set s then that is countably infinite if you can put it in one to one correspondence with the set of natural number if you can do this then this set s is called countably infinite so let's let's assume your set s it could be anything set of rational number set of uh, it could be any set okay now assume that uh, your set s is like this a1 a2 a3 and so on now this is your set and assume that this is countably infinite then because this is countably infinite so we can put it in one to one correspondence with set of natural number set of natural number means one two three and so on so this is your set of natural number now putting them in one to one correspondence means basically defining a bijective function so bijective function from s to n or from n to s okay does not matter because you know every bijective function is invertible so okay now <coughs> this is your set s and if this is if this set s is countably infinite then we can put it in one to one correspondence with set n like this okay so like this now you can see one to one correspondence so this element a1 this is basically the first element okay because it is in the one to one correspondence with this natural number one okay this is your second element this is your third element this is your fourth element and so on so another definition of countability could be like this if we can put if we can put this uh, this set as in a sequence where this is your first element this is your second element this is your third element and every element appears in this sequence at some point of time okay if you have any element then that should appear somewhere here okay okay so like this this is the definition of countably infinite that we have already seen in the last class now we will use it use this definition to prove that some of the set are not countable okay so <clears throat> because remember this we will use many times in today's lecture so this uh, this definition we will use and this definition we have already seen yesterday now let's see one example let's see one example so let's see set of real number whether set of real number is countable or not that we will see so now set of real number is basically your from minus infinity to infinity this is your set of real number okay and let before looking at set of real number we will just look at the real numbers which are between 0 and 1 okay those real numbers which are between 0 and 1 and uh, and which only use 3 comma 4 basically those real numbers we are looking at those real numbers which which are between 0 comma 1 okay which are in basically this 0 comma 1 okay from 0 to 1 and that only use 3 comma 4 the uh, which use digit 3 comma 4 
so basically what i want to say like these re these real numbers we will see for example uh, 0.33343 basically and so on so you can see all the digits that they are using only 3 comma 4 so either 3 or 4 for example 33333 for example 44444 for example 343434 for example so these are the real numbers i am talking about let's see set of these real number okay because of course this is a very limited set of a real number this is uh, this set of real number is basically somewhere here you can see and of course set of real number is a very big thing but we will prove that itself this itself is a uncountable set this type of uh, this set of real number itself is an uncountable set this we will prove okay remember all these numbers only use uh, 3 4 and this thing so you can see no other digit is being used like we are not considering this type of this type of real numbers we are not we are not considering this okay so we are considering those real numbers which only use either this digit or this digit okay now if this is clear what is the problem that problem is clear so so this is our set s set s is basically x where x is a real number x belongs to set of real number x belongs to 0 to 1 means basically this is a you can say uh, between 0 and 1 and x uses digits 3 comma 4 this is our set now let's see whether this set is countable or not countable uncountable that we will see assume that this is countable let's assume we don't know whether it is countable or not but let's assume that s is countable you know that if s is countable first of all s is infinite you don't have to uh, you know uh, that is not a rocket science you can very easily see s is infinite okay you can you can make infinite number of such real numbers so s is infinite there are infinite number of real numbers inside this set s now you can say that if if we are assuming that s is countable basically we are assuming that s is countably infinite so let's assume that s is countably infinite if s is countably infinite then you already know that there must be some one to one correspondence with set of natural number that also you know okay remember right now we don't know what is that uh, correspondence right now we don't know uh, the bijection the bijective function between s and n those things we do not know but we are assuming that because we are assuming that this is countably infinite so definitely there is some bijection definitely there is some one to one correspondence with set of natural number okay now let's assume that this is the uh, correspondence <clears throat> let's assume some correspondence is there one to one correspondence is there and i told you when there is one to one correspondence with set of natural numbers then you have first uh, you have <clears throat> you can say in this set as you have first number second number third number fourth number all these things so that is what we have already seen because if this is your set as a1 a2 and so on then and let's assume this has one to one correspondence with set of natural number then you have a first number second number and so on let's assume the first number is you can give me any random number let's assume the first number is 0 0.333434 randomly i am writing something so let's assume this is your first number so this is your a1 a1 means the uh, the number which is in which is in one to one correspondence with natural number one let's assume the second number is 0. Point, any number you can give me 3 4 3 4 3 4 any number you can give me because i don't know what is this one to one correspondence what is this bijective function but i know that if this is countably infinite then definitely definitely there is at least one such bijection at least one such one to one correspondence will exist okay so i am just assuming that whatever is that one to one correspondence whatever is that one to one correspondence i am taking it now in that one to one correspondence uh, the third number could be anything for example maybe this is maybe this is this we don't know okay but we are assuming this. so like this a4 and so on okay so <clears throat> we have assumed it to be countably infinite and hence this is the one to one correspondence let's assume this is the one to one correspondence then you know one thing that 
all the digits must appear okay because every uh, <coughs> from this set every element must appear in this sequence somewhere somewhere it must appear if there is any number for example if i give you this number 0 0.334 334 334 so if i give you this number then this number should definitely appear in this sequence somewhere okay now we will show we will prove that we will make a natural number we will make an element of this set as which will never appear in this sequence which will never appear let's prove uh, let's see how to prove it so the proof is called cantor's diagonalization theorem because what cantor did so there is this great mathematician cantor what he did first he assumed then he created a number which is not present in this sequence anywhere this is an infinite sequence you can see a4 a5 and so on this is an infinite sequence but he created a number which is not present in this sequence anywhere how did he create it very easily he created like this so he see he saw the first number and in the first number the first uh, you can say in this a1 you can see this is the first place 3 so he create he made it 4 okay now he he went to second number in the second number this is the 4 so he made it 3 now in a3 in a3 this is the third so he created he made it 3 are you getting what he did so basically in a4 in a4 let's assume a4 is you can give me any number let's assume a4 is this then in a4 this is the <coughs> you can say this is the fourth digit so he made it 4 like this he was doing now he created a number like this you can see that first of all this number few properties first of all this number is also in this set because you can see this is also a real number this is also uh, from 0 to 1 or this is uh, this also this number also uses only digit 3 comma 4 and also you can see that this number is not equal to a1 why because this number is differing from a1 this number is different from a1 in the first place okay and this number is different from a2 in the second place this number is different from a3 in the third place this number is different from a4 in the fourth place and so on this number will be different from a5 in the fifth place like that okay so this number that we have created this number that we have created this is different from every number in this sequence so we have proven that this number does not occur in this sequence anywhere okay and hence we have proven that this sequence is definitely not a you can say one to one correspond basically uh, this this is not a sequence you can see this we have proven so is this proof clear anyone has any doubt in this proof this is called diagonalization proof why this is diagonalization proof because this is you can see uh, this is a diagonal this is the diagonal you can see like this this is the diagonal diagonal that we are creating in this diagonal on this diagonal every digit we are flipping we are making th uh, we are converting 3 to 4 4 to 3 4 to 3 3 to 4 and like this and the reason why we are doing it because we want to create a number which is not in this sequence and hence we have proven that this set s is not countable because first we assumed that this is countable if this is countable then there there must be some one to one correspondence if there is one to one correspondence with natural numbers then we must have first number second number third number fourth number and so on and now if we have this sequence if we have this sequence then i can i can create a number which is not in this sequence i can create a number and hence i can say that this definitely is not a sequence okay so hence i can say this set s is not countable okay don't worry if <laughs> if there is anything that you did not get i will take more examples and today four or five examples we will take and it will be clear okay so the next example that we will take is set of all infinite strings so assume that this is your sigma 0 comma 1 this is sigma now i am defining sigma power omega what is sigma power omega sigma power omega is basically 
those strings uh, set of all strings of length uh, of infinite length okay so what is sigma power omega sigma power omega is is basically set of all infinite length strings set of all infinite length strings remember infinite length strings okay actually uh, let me tell you few things now uh, when i was teaching this uh, this example when i was teaching to some other students so at that time uh, they told me that uh, strings are always of finite length so many of you also think that strings string is always of a finite length some of you think like that okay but actually this is not true okay strings that we study in toc those are of finite length so strings that we study those have finite length every string is of a finite length but that does not mean that a string cannot be of infinite length okay so like we study these machines for example we study finite automata pda okay turing machines these machines that we study they are defined they are defined for only finite length strings so you can see that is the reason why all the strings that we study are of finite length okay and also there is one more reason because we define in our toc that we study in that we define something called sigma star this clean star this clean star we define and what is the def definition of this clean star this the definition of clean star is like this for example uh, if if i give you so for example sigma star then the definition is like this sigma star is basically sigma power n for some n belonging to natural set of natural number this is the definition of sigma star so you can see this uh, clean star is defined like this okay hence because of this clean star we only get strings which are of finite length because every string will have length which is equal to some natural number okay so that is the reason all the strings that we study are of finite length but there is a scientist there is a you can say <coughs> computer scientist buki so this buki studied some machines those are called buki automata like we have finite automata push down automata similarly this buki studied something called buki automata and this buki automata is defined for infinite length strings so you have a buki automata and this buki automata will take input and the input is infinite length string so this buki defines something called sigma power omega what is sigma power omega this sigma power omega is basically set of all infinite length strings anyway okay this information let me tell you this information that i have given you this is not required for your gate exam but i am just telling you that okay the world of uh, theory of computation is a very very large you can see we only study few things but there are many 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 other things okay so anyway uh, let's come to this point so let's assume this is your sigma 0 comma 1 and i give you a set s which is set of all infinite length strings infinite length strings over sigma okay now <clears throat> so every string is of infinite length for example 0 0 0 0 0 and so on this is a string for example 0 1 0 1 0 1 this is a string. infinite length strings we have here now let's see whether this set s this is countable or not so this set s is also not countable and how we 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 will prove it the same the same method cantor's diagonalization theorem okay cantor's diagonalization theorem again the same same construction we will make nothing we will change same construction so what we will do first we will assume that s is countable we assume that s is countable now you already know that if s is countable and you can see this s is infinite also because there are infinite number of such strings now you can see if s is countable then we have then what we have then we have a one to one correspondence with set of natural number if we have one to one correspondence with set of natural number then we have a sequence basically first element second element third third element and so on let's assume that sequence is like this let's assume the 
first element is basically this let's assume this is the first element randomly i am writing anything okay like let's assume this is the first element let's assume this is the second element anything i am writing okay i don't know that what is that uh, sequence i don't know what is that one to one correspondence i don't know these things so i am randomly writing anything and i am assuming that because there is because there is one-to-one -one correspondence so definitely there is first element second element third element so definitely there is a sequence here this type of sequence is there okay and so on and so on so this is the sequence okay now i will prove that i will, what i will do i will construct i will construct an element of s which is not present in this sequence anywhere in this sequence anywhere that is not present so how i will do it again very simple method so in this first element first position this so i will <coughs> so i am creating a number x let me create a number x like this this is zero so i will create a number one okay in this a2 this second place is one so i will make it zero in a3 this third place is one so i will make it zero in a4 this fourth place is zero so i will make here one and so on and so, and so and so on it will keep on going on okay in a5 the fifth position i will flip it so like this i have created a number you can see one thing that this x this is also a infinite length string why because this a1 a2 a3 a4 this sequence is infinite so this x is also an infinite length string also you can see that this x is a part of this x is an element of s x belongs to s and also you can see this x does not this x does not occur in this sequence anywhere in this sequence you can see anywhere this x will not occur why because this x is different from a1 in the first place this x is different from a2 in the second position this x is different from a3 in the third position this x is different from a4 in the fourth position and so on this x will be different from a10 in the 10th position and so on so this x is different from all the numbers in this sequence and hence you can say this x does not occur in this sequence so this this sequence definitely does not cover x and hence you can say that our assumption was false so we can say s is uncountable so like this so this is also this is basically your Cantor's diagonalization method you can see the same thing that we that we did in the uh, last example that is what we have done this is your diagonal you can see this is the diagonal okay so <clears throat> so this is how Cantor proved many results he proved using this same method you will see this method is so so much interesting because this same method this one fixed method can solve many 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 problems okay <clears throat> like let's take one more example and this is basically uh, your so you can see first of all set of real numbers is uh, countable uh, sorry uncountable because we have already seen a very small subset of real numbers we took which was uh, from 0 to 1 that itself was uncountable you can see so for example this set s okay which was a uh, set of real numbers between 0 and 1 and <clears throat> only uses the digits 3 comma 4 this set s itself was uncountable so of course set of real number is a superset of this s so definitely that is also uncountable okay now anyway let's <coughs> take one one more example and this is a very 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 important uh, theorem also and this is this will i told you in the last class i told you there are many different levels of infinity I told you the lowest level is basically countable like this set of natural number this is the lowest level of infinity okay and there are always there are many many different levels of infinity I told you this and always remember for a, for any level there is a some uh, level of infinity which is larger than it so like this I told you there are different different uh, levels of infinity all these levels are called uncountable basically all these infinity levels are called uncountable okay and on this level every every infinity is countable like on this level you have set of natural numbers set of integers set of rational numbers so all the countable set you have all the countable infinite set you have okay and this is the lowest level of infinity now 
I will prove that I will prove this result. This is a very interesting result you can see because there are there are always you can say different different levels of infinity. How to prove it? And to prove it, we will prove something called and this result is very 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 important. If you have any set finite infinite any set any set s okay finite infinite countable and countable does not matter if you have any set s then cardinality of s is strictly less than cardinality of 2 power s what is 2 power s 2 power s is power set of s 2 power s this is basically your power set of s you know what is power set of s power set of s means set of all subsets of s okay now this result this is the most famous result of Cantor actually this is the most famous result of Cantor and he he has proven that for any set s finite infinite countable and countable whatever set you have then cardinality of set s is strictly less than cardinality of 2 power s this I can also <coughs> I can also say that there is never a one to one correspondence so I can say that one to one correspondence will never be between set s and set 2 power s there will never be a one to one correspondence okay you can have any set s and its power set 2 power s there will never be one to one correspondence between these two things okay and this we need to prove so first <coughs> let's just okay uh, for finite set you can very easily see it if you have a finite set s then you can easily see why why because if you have finite set s and it has a cardinality n then your cardinality of power set will be 2 power n and you can see n is not equal to 2 power n so that's why you can very easily see that the uh, so this result is true for finite set definitely for finite set it is true okay very easily you can see like this now we will see for infinite set how to prove it and remember very important result this is uh, you I will tell you why so let's assume that s is infinite if s is infinite and let's assume s is something like this maybe some a1 a2 a3 something okay maybe these are the elements I am just naming them okay I am just saying that okay these these are the elements remember set s could be anything countable and countable infinite anything now if this is your set s you know what is your power set power set is basically set of all subsets of s now I want to prove that this one to one correspondence will never exist between s and 2s this will never exist this this is what I want to prove okay now to prove it what I will do I will assume that there is one to one correspondence between s and 2s let me assume it so assume so this is the assumption assume s and 2s they can be put in one to one correspondence let's assume if you can do this then you know that again the same thing will happen if this is your 2 power s let's assume the 2 power s has f1 f2 remember each f1 f2 these are basically subset of s okay so let's assume like this you have one to one correspondence you have between s and 2 power s you have one to one correspondence okay so again what i will do again i will use the Cantor's diagonalization theorem and i will create i will create a uh, you can say element which is not present basically uh, which is not present in this you can say one to one correspondence let me prove it how to uh, how to prove it see, see so this is your a1 let's assume this a1 is uh, when we are making this one to one correspondence at that point of time let's assume this a1 is uh, pairing with f1 and remember every fi is basically a subset of s because you know fi is an element of 2 power s 2 power s is power set power set means set of all subset of s so fi is basically subset of s now a2 a2 is pairing with f2 a3 a3 is pairing with f3 and so on and so on now what i will do i will create a new f dash how i will create it and i will show that that f dash is not covered because if this is bijection if this is one to one correspondence 
then definitely you know every bijective function is 1 1 and every bijective function is 1 2 so every f i must be covered but i will create a new f dash basically a new f i i will create this is not covered in this bijection okay how i will create it and the method is very simple here what i will do let's assume that a1 is going to f1 so this f1 is a subset of s either this f1 will have a1 or not okay like this f1 is basically subset of s let's assume this f1 is like this this f1 is a2 a3 a4 let's assume this is your a1 uh, f1 this is f1 now you can see the <coughs> this f1 does not contain a1 so i will create a1 here i will put a1 here are you seeing what i am doing see this a1 is going to f1 this a1 is pairing to f1 and this f1 does not contain a1 so i am putting a1 here now what i will do this a2 is pairing with f2 and this f2 let's assume this f2 is this a2 a3 a4 a5 and so on something like this this is your f2 now you can see this f2 contains a2 this f2 contains a2 so i will not take a2 like basically i will not take a2 here okay now i will go to a3 if this f3 does not contain a a3 then i will take a3 let's assume this f3 does not contain a3 basically let's assume a3 is not here then i will take a3 and so on this is how i will create a f dash you can see what i have done why i have done it the reason is this because i want to create a new f dash first of all such a f dash i want to create which is which is in this set of course you can see this is a uh, this f dash is a subset of s so definitely this f dash will belong to 2 power s and you can also see that this f dash is different from f1 why because f1 does not contain a1 f dash contains a1 so f dash is different from f1 f dash is different from f2 why because f2 contains a2 f dash does not contain a2 similarly this f dash is different from f3 because f3 does not contain a3 f dash contains a3 similarly this f dash will be different from f4 this will be different from f5 this will be different from f6 and so on so this f dash will be different from all of them and hence i can say this f dash is not covered in this bijection okay so you can say this by this definitely is not a bijection if this f dash is not covered then definitely this is not a on to function and hence i can say this is not a bijection so hence i can say there is no bijection exist so the bijection between s and 2s does not exist anyone has any doubt in this proof let me know this is also <clears throat> similar very similar to the previous proof that we have seen all the proof all the previous proof that we have seen this is similar to those we are basically creating uh, we are basically creating a element which is not present here anyone has any doubt in this let me know so like this okay and hence this proves that we do not have one to one correspondence between set s and uh, 2 power s okay so if you have any set s then this s has strictly less cardinality than its own power power set okay take some example where this will fail for some countable infinite set yes okay naim is saying okay let's uh, yeah that is a good idea so let's take set of natural number you know what is set of natural number 1 2 3 4 and so on this is your set of natural number let me prove that set of natural number has strictly less cardinality than set of uh, this basically 2 power n okay let let's prove it and the same method we will do basically i want to prove that set of natural number cannot be put in one to one correspondence with 2 power n what is 2 power n that is basically power set of n okay you know what is power set of n power set of n means 
set of subsets of n okay so <coughs> let's see this now this is your 2 power n so 2 power n has okay some elements uh, subsets of n okay th those could be anything for example f again the f1 f2 and so on remember f1 could be like this maybe f1 is like this 2 4 6 8 maybe this is f1 maybe this is f2 f2 is basically 1 3 4 maybe this is f f2 maybe f3 is empty set so you can see each fi is basically subset of n you can see each fi because this is 2 power n 2 power n means power set of n so that is how you can see these are the elements in 2 power n okay now again i will assume assume that there is one to one correspondence between n and 2 power n let's assume assume that there is one to one correspondence there is bijection between this set set of natural number and power set of natural number okay you know that if this is if this is a bijection if this is one to one correspondence then definitely uh, like this you have something like this okay so this is your one two three four and so on and you have a one to one correspondence we don't know what is this one to one correspondence but you know that let's assume we have assumed that this is the one to one correspondence okay now in this one to one correspondence i don't know uh, to which subset of n this one is mapping i don't know uh, to which but let's take let's assume that this is the set let's assume this uh, 2 4 6 8 and so on basically set of even natural number okay now next for example i don't know to which element this 2 is mapping i don't know but let's assume that element is 1 2 3 n itself maybe n itself okay i don't know you can put anything i don't know to which element this 3 is mapping but let me let me map it to maybe 3 comma 4 i don't know to which element this 4 is mapping but let me map it to uh, maybe 5 comma 6 comma 7 comma 8 and so on like this you can see what i'm doing because i don't know to which elements they are mapping what is this uh, bijection what is this one to one correspondence i don't know so i am just taking random uh, random uh, you can say elements okay now what i will do i will create a f i will create a f dash which is not in this list basically i will create a f dash which is not covered by this bijection by this one to one correspondence this is not covered how i will create it very easy just see okay like this one is not present in its own image one is not present in f1 you can see one is not present in f1 remember f1 means uh, to the element to which it is mapped basically so you can see one is not present in f1 so i will take one now what i will do two is present in f2 so i will not take two similarly three is present in f3 so i will not take three four is not present in f4 so i will take four like this i will do basically i will take those elements i will take those natural numbers those natural numbers n i will take which are not present in fn so if n is not present in fn then i will take this n okay and let's assume if x is present in fx then i will not take x basically i will not take x like this i am doing now you can see this f days you can see this f days first of all this f days is also a subset of n you can see this f days is also a subset of n so this f days is a part of 2 power n okay and also also you can see this f days is different from f1 why because f1 does not contain 1 but f days contains 1 so also this f days is different from f2 why because f2 contains 2 and f dash does not contain 2 similarly this f dash is different from f3 because of this 3 f dash is different from f4 because of 4 and so on and so on so this f dash is different from every element that we have here so you can see f dash is not covered by this one to one correspondence this this f dash this element is not covered by this bijection so you can say 
that no such bijection exist okay this assumption was wrong so hence we can say set of natural number it has strictly less cardinality than 2 power n so this is how you can you can very easily you can prove it okay anyone has any doubt you can ask sir can the subsets be infinite here if so how they can we whether this element is preserved or not nine of course they uh, the uh, subset can be infinite because what is 2 power n 2 power n is basically see what is 2 power n 2 power n is basically subset of set of all subset of n so n itself you can see i have taken for example you can see one is mapping to set of all natural number so this one is mapping to infinite set this this infinite this is infinite subset of n also you can see this two is mapping to n itself because you know n is subset of n every set is subset of itself so you can see i have taken i have taken infinite set also finite set also for example this three is mapping to three comma four this four is mapping to uh, like this all the all the natural numbers that are greater than or equal to five so like this and now naim is asking see the point is what we are doing like this is this is a game let's assume that you you come to me and you say that you have found a bijection between n and 2 power n okay so you will tell me that you have a bijection okay now what i will do i don't know whether you are telling truth or not i don't know so but i can prove you false okay now you have this bijection in your pocket you have this bijection maybe in your notebook you have your bijection what i will do i will tell you that i can always create an element which is not covered by your bijection you will say that no you cannot so i will prove it to you what i will do i will tell you i am not looking in your notebook you have your notebook in your notebook you have a bijection right now you have your bijection and you are very confident that you have a bijection between set of natural number and 2 power n you have a one to one correspondence what i will do i will tell you that just see your element 1 and to whom you are mapping it of course you are mapping it to someone in your bijection in your one to one correspondence you are mapping it to some uh, you can say some subset of n then i will tell you does one belong to your f1 you will say no then i will take one then i will ask you does two belong to your f2 you will say yes then i will not take it and so on this is how i will create this f days and finally at the end i will say that this f days is is not covered by your bijection okay yes you give me bijection and i will alter the elements and i will prove that this element is not covered by your bijection you will give me bijection so basically this is how i am proving that whatever bijection you give me i don't even have to look at your bijection whatever bijection you give me i can create element which is not covered by your bijection and hence i can say that your claim you are claiming that you have a bijection your claim is false so no bijection can exist and hence you can say set of natural number has strictly less cardinality than set of uh, this is basically 2 power n okay so this is how you can prove it so this is called cantor's diagonalization theorem okay and this is a very important result actually because this what what this result does let me tell you what this result has done so if you have any set s remember countable uncountable any set finite uh, infinite any set you have any set any set s then you know that set s is has le strictly less than less cardinality than 2 power s because set s never has one to one correspondence with 2 power s okay at this point of time you can say that there are different levels of infinity for example if you have this is this is the level where set of real number is there let's assume on this level set of real number is present okay this is the infinity level you can say this is the infinity level where in where set of real number is present then this is the infinity level where 2 power r is present what is 2 power r this is basically power set of real numbers 
and if this is the level where 2 power r is present then this is the level where 2 power 2 power r is present okay and if this is the level where 2 power 2 power r is present then this is the level where 2 power 2 power 2 power r is present and so on and so on so like this you can prove so you can see this result why this result is most interesting result let me tell you the sto uh, story behind this result because Cantor, when Cantor was a student okay he was a student at that time he came to he he went to his professor this is the real story actually he went to his own uh, professor uh, whoever was his guide i don't remember the name so he went to his professor and he told he, his professor that infinity has different levels not all infinity are same so this is what he told his professor but his professor thought that uh, this is basically some uh, some rubbish why because his professor was thinking that all infinity are same like in our childhood uh, when we were uh, you can say when we were in school at that point of time we were also thinking that all in infinity are same if you have an infinite thing then infinity is in equal to infinity like this we were thinking okay so this professor he was also thinking like this that all infinity are basically same now this Cantor said that no there are levels in, inf in infinity there are categories in infinity one infinity is greater than other infinity so actually this professor he basically uh, did not uh, so this Cantor had his uh, you can say results so he wanted to publish but this professor did not allow him to publish okay and hence uh, that is why actually this Cantor uh, had to go to some uh, some other professor and that professor uh, allowed him to publish finally this Cantor uh, published his results and so on so this is the story you can see uh, Cantor <coughs> Cantor proved that there are all there are different 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 levels of infinity this is how so this result is very important actually and many questions can be made in gate exam also many questions can be made from uh, from this from this result what are the questions for example first question you can make like this assume that you have a set s any set okay assume that you have a set s and this is your power set of s so this is your set s and this is your power set of s now my question is can there can there exist can there exist surjective function surjective function from s to n from s to 2 power s so this is the first question you have this s could be any set remember it could be any set and this 2 power s is basically power set of uh, s now question is can there exist surjective function from s to 2 power s and the answer is you can see the answer is no because you already know we have proven that set s has strictly less cardinality than 2 power s so you can never make surjective function because if you can make surjective function then definitely uh, like okay this is like this okay set s is like this and <coughs> so you can never make a surjective function and what is the reason we have shown that let's assume you have a surjective function assume assume you have a surjective function then we can create an element f dash like the way i created you can create an element which is not covered by this surjective function okay so like this okay <coughs> anyway so this type of questions can be made so uh, in our proof we have created f dash from this set from this set we created f dash which was not covered okay so similarly you can you can do this okay like so this type of question they can ask you can there exist surjective function from s to 2 uh, s to 2 power s and and these things okay can we say something regarding infinite subset subset with infinite elements of uncountable set so let's take one more question this is the gate exam question and this is a gate question actually this is basically let's assume this is your set of uh, set of natural number n is set of natural number now s is basically set of finite subsets of n set of finite subsets of n okay 
so this is your set of natural number and this s is basically set of finite subsets of n now this s is actually countable remember this s is not 2 power n why because 2 power n will also contain infinite subsets of n but what i am taking i am taking set of finite subsets of n okay now this set s this is countable now here you might be thinking why can't we apply the same Cantor diagonalization theorem why can't we apply that and let's so let me try to apply i am going to apply it okay and you tell me where is the somewhere there is a mistake i am going to apply it but there will be mistake somewhere you need to find out that mistake the same procedure i will do remember this is set of natural number one two three what i am going to do the same procedure assume that assume that uh, this s is uh, wait, wait a second yeah so again the same thing again i will assume that s is countable assume assume s is countable this is the procedure that we did in the in the all the last uh, three or four examples that we have seen so far in all those things we have assumed it assume s is countable if s is countable then definitely first of all of course s is infinite you can see just look at s you can see this is infinite because of course you can create uh, infinite number of finite subsets of n so definitely s is infinite and i am assuming that s is countable so basically s is countably infinite if s is countably infinite and i am assuming uh, oh sorry uh, s is countably infinite so definitely s can be put in one to one correspondence with set of natural number let me put it so assume that one is going to some <coughs> finite uh, okay some uh, element of s element of s and element of s could be maybe one two three like this and two is mapping to uh, maybe uh, two is mapping to one comma three comma four and five and maybe three is mapping to three is mapping to maybe empty set maybe empty set and four is mapping to maybe uh, four comma five like this and so on and so on so this is so what i did remember what i did i assumed that s is countable if s is countable then s has one to one correspondence with set of natural number let's assume this is the one to one correspondence i don't know what is that one to one correspondence but let me assume this is the one to one correspondence now again the same method i will do i will create a new element f this let's assume this is f1 this is f2 this is f3 this is f4 f1 means image of 1 f2 means image of 2 and so on now I will create a new element f des like this the same the same method i will apply <coughs> previous uh, previously i applied you can see one belongs to f1 so i will not take one two belongs to f2 i uh, two does not belong to f2 so i will take two you can see two does not two does not belong to f2 so i will take two oh and one belongs to f1 so i will not take one three does not belong to f3 so i will take three 4 belongs to f4 so i will not take 4 and so on this is how i will do now you can see this element f des is different from f1 this element is different from f2 this element is different from f3 this this element f des is different from f4 and so on the same way we did for the last uh, in all the last examples all, in all the previous examples uh, the same way i am doing like this f des I have created f des this f des is different from each fi okay in this whatever fi you have this f des is different from all of them so now my question can this or can i say that uh, this can i say that this bijection is false can i say this yes 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 right so nine nine has okay given the mistake so this is the mistake that we have done even though i have created f days but remember f days is infinite so this f days does not belong to s remember what i am doing okay so this is the mistake this is a very common mistake actually many students do okay what they do 
they create app desk okay the same way they create app desk but remember this app desk does not even belong to us because this app desk is infinite this app desk will keep this app desk is basically infinite and hence we cannot say that this is contradiction hence we cannot say that okay this bijection is wrong because this is the contradiction so that is the reason this method this cantor's diagonalization method will not work on this example so remember this method cannot prove okay this method uh, by this method basically we cannot prove whether this is countable or uncountable so i hope that everyone got uh, what i am trying to say so whenever you apply this cantor diagonalization method you need to take care of these things whatever element you create first of all that element should belong to your set s that is the first requirement the second requirement that element should be different from every uh, every element okay so like this you can see this is the mistake and you can see this is the mistake here now actually this s is actually countable let me prove why this is countable we will apply the countability lemma in the last class we have seen this countability lemma this is what i will apply this is this was the you can say this is the most easy procedure to uh, to prove countability so what is s your s is basically set of finite subsets of s uh, and set of finite subsets of n okay so this is your set s okay every uh, fi finite subsets you have basically okay this is your set s what i will do countability lemma remember countability lemma so to every natural number to every natural number i will assign some finite number of elements so what i will do very very easy thing that you can do is basically what you can do just uh, whatever for example if you have here a comma b comma c comma d then you assign it to a plus b plus c plus d so basically this set you can assign to a plus b plus c plus d like this actually this we have done to, uh, yesterday i think let me know i think this example set of finite subset of n this example i think we have done in the uh, yesterday's lecture so like this so whatever whatever is your element just map it to a plus b plus c plus d now you can apply countability lemma and you can see that to every natural number to every natural number we are assigning only a finite number of elements to every natural number you can take any natural number for example if you have this natural number 10 then to this 10 we are assigning only a finite number of elements how many elements we are assigning that does not matter exact uh, exact number does not matter but finite number of elements we are assigning and uh, how uh, why i am claiming this like why i am so confident that we are assigning a finite number of elements because that you can find very easily because whatever whatever element we assign to this 10 those elements cannot contain any number greater than or equal to 11 so that is the reason why i am so confident that uh, to to every natural number we are basically assigning uh, finite number of elements so this actually we have already seen in the uh, yesterday's class in the last lecture that this set of finite subset of n this is basically countable and this is the proof so uh, what we have seen so far let me just summarize all the things that we have seen so far let me summarize and now after that we will see previous year gate questions so first we have seen what is the definition of countability so this is the summary let me give you so first we have seen uh, the definition of cardinality this is the important definition remember remember cardinality is defined with respect uh, with respect to some other set for example basically we say that a and b they have same cardinality if we can put them in one to one correspondence if you have any set a you have any set b if you can put them in one to one correspondence then we will say that they have the same cardinality okay this is the definition of cardinality now this definition of cardinality we have seen and <clears throat> this set of natural number actually now uh, yesterday someone was asking why uh, to define this countability why we are using set of natural numbers why we are uh, making one to one correspondence with set of natural number so the answer is in cantor because when cantor was actually this cantor is basically you can say father of this countability theory 
so this Cantor, what he did, he proved these different levels of infinity by using set of natural numbers. So basically, he was saying that uh, he was saying that okay, these are the set which cannot be put in one-to-one -one correspondence with natural numbers, and these are the set which can be put in one-to-one -one correspondence with natural numbers. So like this, I think from there uh, this has come. So anyway, after seeing the definition of cardinality, we have seen we have seen that those set those set which which can be put in one to one correspondence with set of natural number those set are called countably infinite so these set are called countably infinite and what is countable countable means basically either countably infinite or finite so if your set s is either finite or countably infinite then we will say that it is countable okay. and remember those set which cannot be put those infinite set if you have an infinite set let's assume you have an infinite set uh, s dash and this s dash cannot be put in one to one correspondence with set of natural number if you can prove it if you can prove it that uh, there is no one to one correspondence within uh, between uh, s dash and n then you can say that s dash is uncountable so basically whatever is not countable is uncountable okay and then we have seen how to prove countability remember how to prove countability so if you want to prove countability means basically let's assume that you know that something is countable countability let's assume that you know that something is countable if something is countable then how to prove it very easily you can apply the countability lemma this is the most easy thing that i have found and actually this countability lemma you won't find anywhere this countability lemma I found in a research paper when I was in IIC at that point of time I was studying these kind of things so I was studying research papers and uh, in one of the research papers I found this countability lemma okay and so after <clears throat> after I found this countability lemma actually all the questions of countability became very easy this countability complete this chapter became very easy so you can actually see you can apply this uh, this countability lemma on on uh, you can say 10 or 20 questions and you will see that this countability lemma has made this countability very 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 easy you don't have to find bijection with set of natural number you don't have to find injection nothing you need to nothing you need to find basically all you need to do just you have a set s and you have a set n to every natural number you give a finite number of elements to every natural number you give a finite number of elements and also First of all, to every natural number, to every natural number, you give a finite number of elements and also you cover this complete set S. Okay. If you can do these two things, you cover this complete set S, every element should be, should be covered and to every natural number, you must give some finite number of elements. If you can do this, then you can say S is countable. Okay. S is countable. So this is a countability lemma and this is a very very useful thing okay and also so this is how you can prove countability using this lemma all the results about countability you can prove using this lemma and next thing is how to prove uncountability prove uncountability if you want to prove uncountability then you can use Cantor's diagonalization theorem this one theorem or this one procedure is enough to prove most of the uncountability questions all you need to do is just apply Cantor's diagonalization theorem okay so and this is a very fixed procedure actually what you will do you will assume countability if that is countable if s is countable then there exists a bijection there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence then you what you will do you will create a new element which is not present in this which is not covered by this bijection so like this you will do or what you will do uh, you will assume that s is countable if s is countable then s uh, can be put in one to one correspondence with set of natural number so then definitely s will have first element second element third element and so on then what i will do i will create a new element which is not equal to a1 which is not equal to a2 which is not equal to a3 and so on and this element if if i can create such an element which is not equal to any of these and also which basically which which uh, which belongs to s 
if I can create such an element, then I will say that this this set S is uncountable. So you can see this is how you can prove uncountability. We have proven countability. All these things we have done. Okay, and just a little bit practice, and you will be very comfortable with this countability and countability chapter. Anyone has any doubt? Then you can ask. Now let's see previous year gate questions. But if anyone has any doubt, you can you can ask now. Now, yesterday we have seen this P Q S. These three things we have already seen. Let's see this R set of functions from n to zero one. So I think uh, Ujefa was talking about this example. I think in the chat I have seen yes. Uh, Ujefa, this is the example you are talking about. So let's see this R set of functions from n to zero one. Okay, so. So let's try to uh, let's again prove it using our same same method actually. This is uncountable. But okay, now actually some students ask me, sir, uh, when you know that something is countable, then you can prove it using countability lemma. When you know that something is uncountable, then you can prove it using uh, using Cantor's diagonalization theorem. But when you even don't know whether something is countable or uncountable, then what to do? So that is a very valid question. So actually, the answer is it will come by practice. Okay. Once you do a lot of practice, automatically you will have some idea that uh, just by looking at the question, you will have some idea that okay, it should be countable or uncountable. For example, just just by looking at this question, I can say that this is uncountable. Now, if I know that uh, I have some idea, of course, I am not sure. I am not. Uh, I am not sure that th that this is uncountable. But I have this idea that this is uncountable. Now, once I think that this is uncountable, then I will prove it. And to prove it, I will apply the Cantor's diagonalization method. If I succeed, then I will be confident that this is uncountable. If I do not succeed, then I will think maybe this is countable. Maybe. Then I will apply countability lemma. If I succeed in countability lemma, then I will say that this is countable, like that. But actually, this is just a matter of practice. Okay. Of course, you just need to solve almost you can say 10 questions on Cantor diagonalization method you can solve, and 10 questions on countability lemma. Total 20 questions if you solve. Okay, 20 standard questions if you solve all these questions. Okay, these basic questions everywhere you will find them. These are not new. These are not brand new questions. Okay, these are standard questions. So these 20 questions, if you can solve, you you can practice. Automatically, you will know how to approach, how to solve every question of countability. So now let me let me prove it that this is uncountable. And how I will prove it? First, this is your set S. First of all, understand what is this set S. Set S has functions f1, f2. F3 set S has basically functions, and every function f i is basically for, from set of natural number to zero one. Set of natural number to zero one. Okay. Now, for example, this could be the function f1. Maybe this is the function f1. Maybe, maybe this is the function f1, like this. Okay. So you can see this could be the function f1. So you can see in this in our set S, every element is a function. Okay, now to prove that this set S is uncountable, what I will do? What I will do? The method is very, very, very simple. Assume that this S is countable. Again, assume that this S is countable. Assume S is countable. If S is countable, then definitely again we have a one to one correspondence with set of natural number. So you have one to one correspondence with set of natural number. Let's assume that this one to one correspondence with set of natural number is like this. Maybe this F1 is mapping to one. This F2 is mapping to two and this F3 is mapping to three. This F4 is mapping to four and so on. Maybe like this. Now what I will do. I will create a new F dash 
which is not covered by this bijection. Anyone want to suggest how I should create this f dash? So basically, I will create f dash which is not covered by this bijection. Okay, and to to create it actually, what you you can do, you can do like this. Just see this f one. Okay, if this in this f one, just look at one. Okay, for example, if this one is going to zero, okay, let's focus on zero. If this one is going to zero, then in my f dash, what I'm doing, I'm I'm trying to create a f dash. Okay, okay, let me take on the next page. So. So this is uh, this is my set S and this is set of natural number. I have I am assuming that S is countable. If S is countable, then it can be put in one to one correspondence with set of natural number. Let's assume this is the one to one correspondence. Now what I will do? I will create a F dash F dash I will create which is not covered by this bijection. Which is not covered by this bijection. So now how I will create it? Very easily. Just when you okay, just look at f1. In this f1, let's assume f1 is like this. In this f1, in this f1, just look at this one. If this one is going to zero, let's assume one is going to zero. If this one is going to zero, then my one will not go to zero. See, if this one is going to zero, then my one will not go to zero. Now, similarly, let's look at f2. In f2, look at two. Are you uh, so in F to look at two? If this two is going to zero, let's assume two is not going to zero. Let's assume two is not going to zero. If two is not going to zero, then my two will go to zero. Now let's look at F three. Let's assume F three is like this. In this F three, look at three. If this F three is going to zero, then my three will not go to zero. Now let's look at F four. Let's assume f4 is like this. In this f4, just look at 4. Okay, don't worry about other things. Just look at 4. If this 4 is not going to 0, let's assume f is uh, this 4 is not going to 0, then my 4 will go to 0. Like this, and so on, and so on. You can see what I have done. What I have done, I have created a new function from set of natural number to 0, 1. You can see, first of all, this f dash is a part of is uh, this f dash belongs to s first of all this is a function from set of natural number to 0 1 second thing this f dash is different from f1 this f dash is different from f2 f3 and so on f dash is different from f1 due to 1 f dash is different from f2 due to 2 f dash is different from f3 due to 3 f dash is different from f4 due to 4 and so on so you can say that what you can say you can see that this is uncounted because definitely this function f dash is not covered by this one to one correspondence and because this f dash is not covered by this bijection so you can say that this bijection is not valid so you can say that there does not exist any such bijection and hence you can say s is uncountable so s is uncountable this is the very simple proof i think you are finding these things interesting right now when we started, we took first example, then second example, third example. Now this is, I think, uh, sixth or seventh example. At this point of time, now I think you are fine. Okay, you must be finding this uh, proving countability and countability. These things you must be finding interesting. I, I hope that you are finding them interesting because these are very interesting things actually. Okay, let me know if anyone has any doubt anywhere. Okay, so this is your gate question. So actually, uh, everything we have put, proved, P, Q, R, S, all these four statements, we have formally proven. So if you just watch our first lecture, lecture one, and this lecture two, these two lectures, if you watch, then you can formally prove all the questions of countability and uncountability. Very easily, you can prove all these things. Okay. So now... Let's see some countability and countability questions from TOC. So this is a very important area. Coming to TOC, okay, uh, some countability and countability questions can be made. You know that you have a Turing machine 
and many of you already know that Turing machine can be encoded in a binary format. Okay, so this you already know that this uh, you have a Turing machine. Let's assume this is your Turing machine M. Now this Turing machine I can encode I can encode in binary format in binary format. What is what is the meaning of this encoding in binary format? What is the meaning of this? Many students actually know this, but okay, what is the meaning of this? Let's see. See, if you have actually this is not actually just about Turing machine. In any field of computer science, in any field of mathematics, any field of you can say science, if you ever have a finite description, if you have any finite description, remember any finite description if you have then that finite description can be encoded in binary every finite description can be encoded in binary now remember what is the meaning of finite description for example if i give you this uh, for example if i give you this language let's assume let me give you this language sigma star you know this is the language sigma star for example epsilon 0 1 0 0 so basically set of all strings set of all strings that is sigma star now you can see this is infinite description this this description is infinite i cannot give this infinite description to the computer let's assume i have a computer to this computer i cannot give all the strings like i cannot do like this i am giving this string this string this string this string i cannot do this because this is infinite description okay so what how how can i supply this sigma star to computer i want to supply this sigma star to computer how can i do it so very easily i can do it of course this is infinite description so i cannot do but but this sigma star for this sigma star i can write a grammar i can write a grammar you can see a grammar i can write like this s goes to as or bs or epsilon this grammar you can see this grammar will generate sigma star and because this grammar is generating sigma star so i can say that this grammar is basically description of sigma star and you can see this grammar is a finite description this is just a finite description what is the description of this grammar you can see s goes to as bs epsilon this is a uh, gra this is a grammar and it has a finite description it has some set of variables some set of terminals starting uh, starting uh, you can say uh, non terminal and also uh, this set of productions so this is this has a finite description v t is s p only four things okay what is v v is basically your s only what is t t is basically your a comma b comma epsilon okay you can put epsilon also okay okay i am just like whether to put this or not okay that is you don't have to worry okay let's not put it this is your t okay and s s is basically start symbol and p p has only three things this is your p p has three things one is this another is this and another is this so you can see this is your p everything is finite so this complete description is finite description and because this is your finite description so you can encode this description into into by uh, into binary encoding like how, how i will do it like for example this is my grammar you know this is your grammar vtps and your p your p is basically s goes to as s goes to b okay let me write it s goes to as s goes to bs s goes to epsilon now how how i will uh, encode it in binary very easily you can fix your own encoding like for example you want to encode that okay for a you will use 0 for b you will use 0 0 okay for epsilon you will use 0 0 0 now let's assume for s you will use 0 and like this so now i will create this <coughs> uh, i will encode this grammar into uh, binary encoding how i will do you know uh, basically first i will define what is v okay how many number uh, v is basically your this so i will do like this my encoding will go like this first my encoding will uh, will encode v so i will say okay how many how many non terminals i have how many uh, only one non terminal so i will write zero 
so basically this first element this zero will tell me how many non terminals i have so this is telling me cardinality of v okay now then i will i will draw one zero one basically zero this is one okay this is one uh, this one will tell me that okay next component what is next component what is that non terminal what is that non terminal so maybe that non terminal is s and i am putting s with zero then i will put one now i will put how many terminals i have how many terminals so i have uh, two terminals so i will put zero 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 means two terminals then i will put one now what are those terminals one is a and another is b okay like this then i will ask uh, what is your basically uh, what is your start symbol Let, let's assume this is like this s comma p what is your start symbol start symbol is basically zero so i will put like this then i will say what is the set of productions what are the productions so the productions are basically uh, s is going to as so s means zero zero is going to as a means zero s means zero so something like this okay like of course i can uh, of course uh, some something i will have to do maybe maybe i will i will have to put uh, one here maybe i will have to put one here but you are getting my point okay right now some some binary encoding i can define and using that binary encoding i can encode this complete grammar so what i am doing this grammar is a finite description and i am encoding i am whatever information i have here whatever information i have here i am encoding this information using a binary string so that if i send this binary, if i after few years also if i see this binary uh, binary string just by looking at this binary string i can get to know okay this is the grammar okay so it's like by uh, huffman encoding you have studied huffman encoding in your uh, algorithm subject so in huffman encoding what you do so you are here you are the sender okay so you are the sender and this is the receiver now what you do you have some information some information you have and you want to send this information to this receiver but you don't want anyone to uh, you know read this information so what you will do let's assume uh, first you will encode this information this information will be encoded by you okay and you know how to encode and this receiver knows how to decode only you you and receiver this is your encoding you can encode it in any way you want that that is your encoding so you will encode this information and you will send it and then this receiver will receive and he will decode it so remember the way you are encoding it the same way you will decode it because you know how you encoded so you also know how to decode okay so like this so you can decide your uh, own encoding and of course when you decide once you decide your own encoding you can also decode because you know how to encode so, so that is the point okay that is the basic point the <clears throat> the point is that if you have a finite description then you can encode it always you can encode it in a binary uh, format okay hence whatever machine you have for example if you have finite automata pda dpda okay for example you if you have a grammar if you have a um, regular expression okay or if you have turing machine whatever all these are finite descriptions every these everything these these are finite descriptions okay so these finite descriptions can be encoded in binary format okay each of these now the thing is now the uh, so <clears throat> now let's see some questions so some results actually the first result is sigma star is countable sigma star is countable and the proof is very easy let's see the proof also sigma star what is sigma star that you already know sigma star means epsilon is there 0 comma 1 is there then all the two length strings are there okay all the two length then all the three length strings are there okay and so on all the four length strings are there and so on like this this is your sigma star now i can prove that this is countable and the proof is very easy one two the same countability lemma i will apply countability lemma what i will do to every natural number i will assign some finite number of elements for example to this two i will assign all the two length strings to this three i will assign all the three length string to this four i will assign all the four length string and so on 
to this one i will assign the remaining things like this these three things epsilon comma 0 comma 1 so now you can see to every natural number to every natural number i am assigning only finite number of elements because whatever natural number you have if you have natural number 4 then i am assigning all the four length strings of course the number of four length strings is finite so to every natural number i am assigning only a finite number of elements and you can see every element of sigma star is covered you can see so hence you can say sigma star is countable so this is the first result if anyone has any doubt then you can ask because back to back many results i am going to write down okay so this sigma star is countable now the second result you already know that every language is a subset of sigma star remember every individual language why i am writing this individual word actually i don't have to write this individual word but i will tell you every language whatever language you have every language is basically subset of sigma star every language is subset of sigma star and hence every language is also countable because the subset of countable set is countable and how can you prove it very easily actually see subset of countable set is countable subset of countable set is countable and how you will prove it again the countability lemma you can use okay let's assume you have a set s and that is a countable set okay so set s is countable set if s is countable set then countability according to countability lemma to every natural number you have some finite number of elements to every natural number you have some finite number of elements and you have covered all the elements of s now let's take a subset let's take a subset of s so let's assume p p is a subset of s if p is a subset of s that means you have removed some elements from s so let's assume uh, you are removing some elements from s because p is a subset so if you are making p p means basically you are removing some elements from s some elements you are removing from s if you are removing some elements from s then this this is still is according to countability, countability lemma this is still is the correct uh, you can say uh, correct situation why because to every natural number you still have finite number of elements because already you had finite number of elements now some elements you are removing so you you still have finite number of elements and so to every natural number you still have finite number of elements and also also every element was already covered so every element is still covered every remaining element after removing some elements every remaining element is still covered so hence you can say by countability lemma you can say that this p is also countable so subset of countable set is countable this is the very easy proof now you can see that you already know that i hope that you know that every language what is a language language is basically set of strings and what is sigma star sigma star is set of all strings language is set of strings and sigma star is set of all strings and hence you can say every individual language that is a subset of sigma star so every language is countable remember every language is countable whatever language you have whether your language is uh, sigma star itself is a language so that is also countable that we have proven whatever language you have every language is countable whether your language is regular language okay that does not matter regular language non-regular language re language decidable language undecidable language not re language every individual language is countable okay now this is the second result now after the second result let's see the next set of turing machines is countable sir individual language means yes okay what do i mean by individual language is this let me let me take it see consider this language l and this language l is basically w such that uh, you can say w contains 00, zero. contains 00, zero. so this l is a language you can see this l is a language basically l is a set of all strings set of uh, set of all strings which contain 00, zero. okay so this l is a language and that is this to this language i am uh, calling individual language because this is an individual language okay now 
there is something called language and there is something called set of language on uh, on one way we have language on other way we have set of language set of languages so for example this l is a language this l this l is a language okay and set of languages for example set of all regular languages set of all for example in the, if we have set of all regular languages let's assume reg reg is basically set of all regular languages okay now in this reg you have l comma other languages so you can see this reg is set of all regular languages so you have l also because you know l is regular language so remember l is regular language and what is this reg this reg this reg is set of all regular languages so in this l you have strings in this reg you have languages okay so this is the difference actually uh, some students actually right now some students might be thinking that this is so obvious point but what i have seen in my last 3 or 4 years this is the hardest thing for a student to understand let me tell you why just 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 a second let me charge my phone what i have seen in uh, in last 3 years actually okay every year i am seeing these thing this is the hardest hardest thing for many students to understand that a language is not set of language so you can see what is the difference between for example many students say this like uh, like all uh, okay uh, this will come okay don't worry uh, like we have already seen that every language is countable then they will say that uh, sir every language is countable but uh, uh, not all languages are uncountable this type of statement they give okay they give this type of statement that not all languages are uncountable languages are uncountable okay don't don't worry about my spellings whatever i am writing no not all languages are languages are uncountable this is what they say and then they argue with me that sir not all languages are uncountable you are saying that uh, not all I, i am saying that not all language is countable countable i am saying because even not all language is also a language let's assume you have l and this l is a not all language okay let's assume now remember not all language is also a language this l is also a subset of sigma star so i am saying that and you already know sigma star is countable so this l is also countable so this not all language l this is also countable now many students will say that sir but not all languages are uncountable see when what do you mean by not all languages actually they have just by hearted this statement they have just by hearted this statement that, that not all languages are uncountable by hearted okay maybe some coaching institutes they just uh, write down these statements these coaching institutes and all these things okay and the students uh, they have by heart this type of statement they do not try to understand what what they are what they want to say see when you say not all languages are uncountable this statement actually this statement should be like this set of not all languages if you have set of not all languages means you have a set in which you have not all languages in which you have this l also and so on now this set of all not all languages that is uncountable so that is the difference remember each individual language is countable this l is countable each individual each individual uh, you can say uh, not all language each individual language is countable but this set of not all languages this is uncountable and we will prove it don't worry we will prove it so we have seen two results sigma star is countable every language is a subset of sigma star so every language is countable now the third statement that set of all turing machine are countable set of all set of all turing machine that are countable and this is not a very hard thing because you know set of all turing machine why because every turing machine if you have a turing machine m then we can encode this turing machine using binary encoding so some binary encoding you have okay now set of all turing machine means those binary encodings those binary encodings basically those binary encodings which 
this binary encoding is for some Turing machine M1, this binary encoding is for some Turing machine M2 and so on. So set of all Turing machine means set of binary encodings. And because this is set of binary encoding, so this is also set of all Turing machine. This is also subset of this is also subset of sigma star. Okay. Are you getting this point? Because every Turing machine can be represented using binary string. Now, when you say that set of all Turing machine, then basically you are saying that set of all binary encodings which represent Turing machines. Okay. So hence you can say this, of course, this is also a subset of sigma star. So you can say this set of all Turing machine is also countable. Similarly, remember set of every finite description is countable actually. Instead of Turing machine, you can put any finite description. What I am saying? I am saying this. Set of all, you can put any finite description here is countable. Set of all is countable. Okay. And here you can put Turing machine, you can put DFA, you can finite automata, you can put NFA, you can put grammar, you can put regular expression, you can basically any finite description you can put here any finite description all these are finite descriptions descriptions for example this turing machine is a finite description because this turing machine is just a seven tuple some set of states some finite set of states some sigma some gamma some uh, initial state some reject state some final state okay and some uh, set of transitions and this transit set of transitions is also a finite set of transitions so you can see Every Turing machine is also a finite description. Only this finite description, this much. So that's why you can say that set of all and here you can put any finite description. Any finite description you can put here. Anything, whatever. Okay. Halting Turing machine, Turing machine, whatever you can put here. But remember, finite description you can put. So set of all finite description basically that is countable that is also countable because if you have a finite description then you can encode it using a binary encoding okay and because you can encode it using a binary encoding so set of all finite description is basically set of some binary encodings and hence that is a subset of sigma star means that is subset of sigma star and hence that is countable so this is how you can say that set of all turing machine set of all dfa and so on these things are countable so this is the next result after that now the next result is set of all regular languages are countable set of all regular languages set of all regular languages remember because already we know that every regular language is countable that you already know because every regular language is subset of sigma star so every regular language is countable that you know but set of all regular languages are countable why again the very easy thing because you know that if you have a regular language l then <coughs> then for that language you have infinite number of dfa you can make see every language you have a regular language particular regular language l let's assume now for that language you have infinite number of dfas d1 d2 infinite number of dfas you can make okay so it's like this you have regular L1, this is a regular language, L2, this is a regular language, L3, this is a regular language, and so on. Now, what you can do, this is your set of DFA. Let's assume this is your set of all DFA. I already told you that set of all DFA is countable. So this set is countable. This set, this is basically your DFA set. This set is countable. You already know this thing. Okay, this we have already seen that this is countable. If this is countable, so you have all the DFA here, you know what I can give, I can give you injective function from this to this. Okay, this is your uh, set, let, let's call it set S and this is your set D. So from set S to set D, I can give you injective function because you know for this L1, you have infinite number of DFAs, you have infinite number of DFAs. Let me take one DFA, of course, for this L1, you have a DFA D1. For this L2, you have a DFA D2. For this L3, you have a DFA D3. Of course, this L for this L1, I can have many, 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 many DFA I can have. But I know at least one DFA I have. At least one DFA. So, at least one DFA. Maybe minimal DFA I can choose. Okay. So, for this L1, I have minimal DFA. For this L2, this minimal DFA. For this L3 and so on. So, like this, 
I can give you injective function. This is an injective function you can see. Okay, why this is injective function? Because if you have two different languages, then they can never go to same DFA. You can see this. If you have two different languages, two different languages, they can never map to same DFA. So that is the reason this is an injective function from H to D. And I told you yesterday, yesterday I told you that if there exists an injective function from a set A to set B, if you have an injective function, if you can define an injective function from set A, A to set B, then you can say set A has cardinality less than or equal to set B. This we have seen yesterday. This theorem, this definition we have seen yesterday. So you can see that I have given you injective function from set S to set D. This is an injective function. Hence, hence I can say this set S is countable. Because why? Because you can see this this set S, from set S to set D I have given you injective function. Injective function. So you can say set S has cardinality less than or equal to set D. And set D is already countable. This is already countable, you know. So hence you can say set S is also countable. So set of all regular languages, set of all regular languages, that is countable. This is how you can prove it. Anyone has any doubt in this proof? Let me know. Anyone has any doubt? So this is how you can prove that set of all regular languages are countable. Okay. Similarly, you can prove set of all RE languages are also countable. Set of all RE languages are countable. Why they are countable? Because the same same logic. You have RE set of RE languages. L1 is RE language. L2 is RE language. L3 is RE language, and so on. And this is your set of Turing machine. You already know set of Turing machine is countable. You already know this thing. This we have already proven. Now what you can do, for every RE language, you can have infinite number of Turing machines. Just choose one of the Turing machines. This, for this L2, you can have infinite number of Turing machines. Just choose one Turing machine. Just choose and so on. So this is how you can, you can define an injective function. Why this is injective? Because if you have two different languages, they can never map to same Turing machine. Two different languages will always have two different Turing machines. So hence you can say this is an injective function from set of R, set of all RE languages to set of Turing machines. And hence you can say that uh, this set S has uh, cardinality of set S is less than or equal to cardinality of this set T. And because this set T is countable, so this S is also countable. So this is how you can say that set of all RE languages are countable. Now one more thing. You know that set of all RE languages are countable. Now let's see set of all languages. Set of all languages. First of all, what is set of all languages? You know sigma star is set of all strings. This sigma star. This is basically set of all strings. And set of all languages. Set of all languages. And every language is subset of sigma star. So actually set of all languages means 2 power sigma star. Okay, because set of all languages is basically power set of sigma star, you can say. Because every language is subset of sigma star. So you can say that when you make power set of sigma star, then what you will get? You will get set of all subsets of sigma star. And every sub subset of sigma star is a language. So you can say set of all languages means 2 power sigma star. And we have already proven in today's lecture, we have already proven that if you have any set S, then that will have strictly less than less cardinality than 2 power S. Every set S has strictly less cardinality than 2 power S. So you can say sigma star have cardinality less than or equal to 2 power sigma star. Okay. So you can say, and remember this sigma star is countable. So basically this sigma star is countable. This sigma star is here. This set of natural number is here, set of uh, integers is here and all these things. So you can say that set of uh, this, this sigma star does not have one to one correspondence with the two power sigma star. Or you can say sigma star has infinity level less than two power sigma star. So this is the infinity level of two power sigma star and this is the infinity level of sigma star. So you can say 
2 power sigma star is basically uncountable. So set of all languages is uncountable. Set of all languages that is uncountable. Okay. Now, if we have seen that set of all RE languages is countable, set of all languages is uncountable means it's like this. This is your set of RE languages. Every language here is a RE language. This is your set of RE languages. Every language is a RE language, remember. Okay. And let's assume this is set of all languages. This is set of all languages. All languages. So of course, if this is the set of RE languages, then these are the not RE languages. This red, uh, this red, red area. This is the not RE languages. For example, here you can have L days, uh, L days two, L days three, and so on. These are the not RE languages. This is not RE. This is not RE. This is not RE, and so on. Now we have seen two results. One is this set, set of all RE languages. This is countable. This we have already seen. This is countable. And also we have seen that set of all languages that is uncountable. What it means? It means, see, if this, if this internal area, if this, this, this is countable and this complete thing is uncountable, what it means? It means that set of not RE languages is uncountable. So set of all not RE languages, if you see set of all not RE languages, that is uncountable. Because if this is countable, and let's assume that uh, set of not RE language is also uh, countable, then countable union countable is countable. You can prove it. Countable union countable. If you have a countable, okay, and union, if you do another countable, then that will be countable. Okay, and again, you can prove it using countability lemma. Very easy. Why? Because let's assume you have a set S, let's assume you have a set T, both are countable. If both are countable then what you have in set s uh, in uh, so to every natural number you have a finite number of elements to every natural number you have a finite number of elements to every natural number you have a finite number of elements this is your s also if t is countable then it means it means to every natural number you have a finite number of elements to every natural number you have a finite number of elements and so on now what you can do you can you can make s union 2 s s union t okay if you do S union T, then also this will hold. You can see then, then also this will hold. Why? Because these are finite number of elements. These are finite number of elements. If you take their union also, then also that will be finite. So to this natural number one, you still have finite number of elements because this is finite. This is finite. Finite union finite is finite. Similarly to this two, this is finite number of elements. This is finite number of elements. So if you union them, then that is also finite. So you can see very easily you can see that to every natural in this S union T in this S union T in this also to every natural number you, you have finite number of elements and every element is covered you can see already every element of T is covered every element of S is covered so every element of S union T is also covered. So hence you can say that countable union countable is countable. Very easy you can see this countability lemma is the much easier thing and actually most of the you can see uh, you will you will hardly find it because this is this is from research paper i told you this countability lemma i found in a research paper i will put the link of that research paper in the description you can read it okay so that is a very nice research paper only three pa three pages and uh, this countability lemma using this countab countability lemma you can prove many 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 things okay so I will put the description of that research paper in the in the comments. If you want to go through it, then that is your wish. If you do not want to go through, then you can. Uh, this lecture is enough. Lecture one, lecture two. These two are enough. Okay. So anyway, you can see that. So hence you can see this is countable and this set of all languages is uncountable. That means that means this set of all notary languages is uncountable. So remember this set of all not re languages is uncountable so these are the results that we have in toc all the results related to uh, countability from toc all the results that we have seen with proof every result we have proven so many 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 examples we have done or oh, actually this is a gate question let me show you 
this is the gate question you can see uh, yes so this is the gate question i think this is gate okay so i don't know whether this is a gate question or not but let's see he is saying sigma equal to a comma b which of the following uh, sets is un, uh, is not countable so set of all strings this is countable because set of all strings means sigma star so set of uh, set of all strings is countable sigma star is countable set of all languages that is uncountable so he is uh, he is asking uncountable so this b is correct now set of all regular languages this we have already seen this is countable set of all languages over uh, sigma accepted by turing machine this is also countable we have seen set of all re languages is countable so the answer will be option b all these statements we have proven actually formally we have proven so these two lectures lecture 1 lecture 2 these two lectures are enough for you to formally understand there is only one thing that i have not proven there is only single thing that i have not proven and that is count proof of countability lemma we have seen this countability lemma but what is the proof of this countability lemma that i have not proven why this countability countability lemma this is such a easy thing why this works like why this is correct the correctness of countability lemma i did not prove okay if you want me to prove the correctness of countability lemma you can join me after gate exam for your gate exam this countability lemma this uh, proof of countability lemma these things are not required so that is why once your gate exam is over if you want i will discuss this uh, proof of countability lemma very easy only 5 minutes proof but we will discuss it after gate exam okay this is this is such a nice tool this countability lemma this is a, such a nice tool that i have found and you can see that uh, it is very useful in solving questions you can see very easily you can solve any question and you can see this this is a gate question every subset of a countable set is countable this we have already seen we have proven it using countability lemma just now in today's lecture we have proven next this uh, pn pn means basically uh, two power n power set of natural number that is uh, uncountable this we have already seen this is a gate 2014 question tell me what will be the answer gate 2014 question tell me what will be the answer sigma is a finite non empty alphabet 2 power sigma star be the power set of sigma star which of the following is true we have already seen that sigma star is actually countable this is countable and this is uncountable so you can very easily see answer is option c option c okay like this so this is a gate question now tell me which of the following is not true which of the following is not true you can see he is saying the set of negative integers is countable yes of course that is countable we have already uh, we can prove it very easily okay set of uh, because set of negative integers is subset of integers and hence uh, this is countable set of integers that are multiples of 7 that is also countable yes set of even integers that is also countable set of real numbers this is not countable answer is this see one more thing i told you that what we did uh we took a example where we took numbers from 0 to 1 so basically this is your 0 this is your 1 and this is your number line so this is your number line on this number line we took some numbers uh basically we took uh, those real numbers set of those real number which are between 0 and 1 and which only contain digits these digits we have seen that this itself was a uncountable thing this this set of real number this itself was uncountable so you can see this set of real number is also uncountable actually let me tell you one thing if you have any two distinct real number any two does not matter how close they are does not matter if you have any two real numbers a comma b such that a is not equal to b any two real number a comma b 
then set this set this set basically you can say this set is uncountable this set is uncountable means you can have any two real numbers for example you can have uh, maybe one real number that you can have is maybe 0 0.01 maybe this is your one real number another real number maybe could be 0 0.0010111 you can see if you have two different real numbers then this set means basically set of real numbers between them set of real numbers between them that will be uncountable this also you can prove it okay it's not a very hard thing you can very easily prove it but anyway you know uh, you got the intuition behind it because uh, between 0 and 1 we have proven that this is uncountable this we have proven similarly you can uh, you can see this also so this is a very nice result actually if you have two different real numbers then set of real numbers between them that will be uncountable so this is how you can see now you can see 0 and 1 by 2 this is 0 and this is 0 0.5 so between them between them all the set of real numbers that is not countable okay so this is how you can do this was also get question this is not a get question but let's solve it if the set of all words over alphabet s is countable that is already true actually then so now he is asking these things so basically s is a alphabet remember s is your sigma s is your sigma now he is asking these things so tell me what will be the answer any language over s is must be finite no language can be infinite for example sigma star itself is a language and that is infinite next at least one language must be uncountable no every language is countable you already know i told you every language is countable but set of all languages is uncountable it's like this every language l1 l2 this is countable this is countable l3 this is countable every language is countable this is countable but set of languages this set as this is uncountable okay every individual language is countable this we have already seen because every language is subset of sigma star any language over s is countable yes this is correct each language is finite no this is not correct anyway answer is c if anyone has any other doubt you can ask so these all these all the gate questions we have already seen actually for example i think yeah this is a gate question that we have seen also let me see if there is any gate question that we this is also gate question we have seen and you can yeah so let's see this is gate 2019 question so what will be the answer tell me what will be the answer here s1 you can see s1 set of all recursive enumerable languages over alphabet 0 comma 1 set of all re languages this is countable we have already seen so this is countable next set of all syntactically valid c programs actually what is basically set of all syntactically valid uh, c programs you can think uh, you can think of it as a subset of sigma uh, as a subset of uh, you can say Turing machine okay because uh, every program correspond to Turing machine for every program whatever program you have whether it halt or not does not matter every program correspond to Turing machine programs correspond to Turing machine means uh, so hence you can say that set of syntactically valid invalid does not matter valid invalid does not matter set of all syntactically valid C program this is countable okay set of all languages over the alphabet okay, actually okay let me tell you why this s2 is countable let me tell you again uh, with another logic with a different logic let me tell you if you have a c program c program consider any c program even if it is a very large program it still is a very it still is a finite a c program cannot be infinite right 
I'm, I'm talking about the syntax. I'm talking about the syntax. So if you are writing a C program, maybe you are writing a 10 lakhs line of code, maybe 10 crore line of code. Okay. You can have, you can say any big C program. So the point is that if you have any C program, that is still is a finite. Every C program is a finite. Every Java program, whatever. Every program that you can write. That is a, a finite program you can write. Maybe five five layer line, uh, five lakhs line, and maybe uh, ten crore line. But this is finite. So this is also a finite description. This C program, this is a finite description. So whether this is syntactically valid, invalid, does not matter. Every C program itself is a finite description because you can convert it into a binary encoding. And hence you can say the set of all C program, whether that is uh, syntactically valid, invalid, does not matter. Set of all C programs is also countable because every C program is basically a finite description. You can convert it into binary encoding. Okay, so like this. So this is H2 is also countable. Set of all languages, this uncountable. Set of all non regular languages. Remember one thing when he is asking, if he when he is saying set of all non regular languages. Then in this set, all notary languages are also there because what is your notary languages? If this is your set of regular languages, then he is saying that set of all non-regular languages. Set of all non-regular languages will also have set of notary languages. So every notary language will also be there. So hence you can, because of these uh, notary languages, because of this set of notary languages, hence you can say that this set of non-regular languages is uncountable so this is also uncountable answer is uh, he is asking what he is asking he is asking uncountable so the answer will be s3 and s4 answer will be option b this is gate 2019 question so all the remaining gate so every gate question we have already seen and this set of rational number is countable this we have already seen in the last class Every subset of countable is countable. This also we have seen in today's class. Okay, so from my side, everything is over. Every single thing that I wanted to, uh, I wanted to discuss, I have already discussed. Many examples, countability, uncountability, uh, Cantor's diagonalization theorem, countability lemma. Many things we have discussed. All the results from TOC. All the results that are possible that have come to my mind so I have discussed if anyone has any doubt then you can ask thank you thank you Naim if you have any doubt then you can ask and uh, so this was about countability actually many things we have seen in this chapter because we have seen some some discussion of TOC also we have seen like every finite description we can convert every finite description can be converted into binary encoding okay so like these many things we have seen so this is the discussion of countability every single thing we have seen and uh, i don't think that i have left out anything all the every previous gate question we have already seen okay so yes so uh, yeah so slides i will share today you can join our telegram group within one hour you will get it so all the slides that i have used uh, i will share them in the telegram group and the link of the telegram group today i will put okay yesterday i forgot but today i will put the link of telegram group in the description of this video so you can access okay and uh, also you can uh, okay of course <laughs> i don't want to say this but if you want you can subscribe to this channel okay so you can share with your friends if if any of your friend is uh, preparing for gate exam or is from computer science or from anywhere so you, if you want you can share okay anyway these two lectures are enough i am just saying lecture one lecture two these two lectures of course almost uh, four hours and we have taken almost four hours but these four hours are enough for you to understand countability uh, for you to formally prove countability every result you can prove every question you can solve so and basically you can get the feel of this subject you can see this is a very interesting subject you can see okay so tomorrow uh, 
uh, i will let you know in our uh, in our telegram group in our whatsapp group i will let you know what is the next topic that we will take okay so we will discuss and uh, whichever topic uh, i will think uh, students are finding hard i will take that okay so i will let you know